This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. <laughs> this is Wretched Radio. A wee bit hesitant to dive into this deep because I think the bottom line from a distance is about the only thing you and I can do this far out is pray for Liberty University. If you think this is a small story beyond the Jerry Falwell Jr. scandal itself, it is not. Liberty University is the largest Christian university in the world. Mike, you went there. How many? Is there 10,000 students on campus? This, this place is huge. It is huge. I still go there. Okay. And how many students are there online? There's tens of thousands online. I think there's close to 100,000. <laughs> And so those champions they're training, they can run in all kinds of different directions once they hit the track. And that is why this is worthy of our prayer time, that Liberty University would start doing things to keep the bad things that we've seen from happening. And I, from a distance, I, I, you, you want to be careful that you don't try to dive too deeply into what's going on because you're not there. But you can see smoke and you should try to determine, all right, what is going on there? Again, I don't go to Liberty University. This ministry has nothing to do with Liberty University. So I don't have a desire to do a thrash and bash on Liberty University. It is an orthodox Christian university, small o orthodox. Their statement of faith is orthodox. And there are good profs there. Mike, I'm sure you know some of them. There are good teachers there. And it would be so much better for the church if Liberty University would veer more to the right and my concern, having seen the letter from the current president of Liberty University, that they are going to try to do some things to make sure that this doesn't happen again. But I would encourage them that the starting place would be repentance. This wasn't just a Jerry Jr. failure. This wasn't just his wife's failure or pool boy's failure. This was a board failure. And there was smoke along the way. Furthermore, even if there wasn't smoke, this just should have been known. How could this, if you don't know the salacious details, just trust me when I say they're salacious. And they've been going on for years. And there was more of a failure there than just Jerry. And I would have loved it to have read from the new president Less of a, hey, we're gonna we're doing an investigation. We've hired a firm to look into the financial dealings, the real estate deals of Jerry Jr. to make sure these things don't happen again, as opposed to we failed you. And we have failed this institution, and we failed our God, and we failed Jerry Jr. and his family, and we failed every student, we failed the legacy of this university, we failed the church. And that sort of repentance would point toward, and because of that, um, maybe Jerry isn't the only one who should be stepping aside. That's right. I don't know the details of everybody on the board, so I wouldn't make a blanket statement. I suspect that there were people on the board who were indeed petitioning for that. But this was this is a big failure, and this is a black eye. When I'm seeing this story pop up in my feed still and you've got uh, uh, what's the name of the, the the guy who used to work for clinton and uh, george stephanopoulos i uh, i haven't watched the evening news forever <laughs> is he a abc i believe i'm not sure he, he was interviewing the pool boy again and they were getting into the details of the situation I, I grant you it's it's just that that man's story, but nevertheless, that isn't my point. It is continuing to stink up the evangelical community because this is red meat. This is chum in the water for secular news. They're all over this. They love yep. this. <laughs> Moral majority, huh? Which is another problem with those two words put together. Remember, Christians, we're not a moral majority. We are a holy minority. We are made holy. We are not the Pharisee company. We are not the self-righteous sect. 
We should be the humble sinners who have been made holy by a gracious act of God. That is what we should be known for. And when we say that we are the moral majority, when we don't behave so morally, oh, wow, does the world love it. That's when they and take their shot. They, they, they take, and, and yeah, can't blame them. They can't, yeah. can't blame them for doing that. It's kind of set up for that. And so my hope had been that the board at Liberty University would have expressed more than what I'm reading here, their official statement goes like this. The board has pledged a full commitment to the spiritual mission of Liberty and has retained one of the leading forensic firms in the world to conduct a thorough investigation into all facets of Liberty University operation during Falwell's tenure as president, including but not limited to financial, real estate, and legal matters. Okay, cool, good. Great. You want to clean out perhaps more dirty closets? Swell. But where's the woe? Where's the throwing dirt on our animals? Where's the responsibility of the others? Jerry did not operate that university all by himself. The board will be reviewing options to establish a new role in the top leadership of the university for someone who will serve as a spiritual coach, mentor, and guide to help ensure that every member of the university leadership fulfills his or her spiritual responsibility to live out the Christian walk expected of each and every one of us at Liberty. Again, swell, and I don't know if other statements have been made, but where is the woe is us? Oh, church, this is so bad, and we are so sorry, and we are going to repent, and we are going to find not just amen, but men who can lead this university in a God, in a better fashion than we have. Once the revelations, this is from the new president. Once the revelations about his past personal life came more fully into light, we acted swiftly and decisively to ask for his immediate resignation, which we received. Some may say that all the signs were there for a long time before last week. It's certainly fair to say that there were questionable comments made. Well, certainly. Yeah. Worrying behavior, right? And inappropriate social media posts. But all the signs were not there until the start of last week. Now, um, I don't know about that. And this is this raises an interesting question for all of us to ponder. And I grant you that the rules, which should be held somewhat loosely, can be drawn differently for each situation. But how much smoke is required before we're concerned that there's a fire? Because... Everybody stumbles. Everybody can sin. Everybody does dumb things. Let's just talk for a moment about your pastor. Let's just say your pastor uses a word that you deem to be coarse. And there are many these days because a current generation doesn't esteem them as coarse, but perhaps you do, and he uses one of those words. Does that mean you've got yourself a heretic? No. No, it doesn't mean that. Now, what if there's consistent language throughout and he's what? He's repenting. He's admitting, I'm working on this. Please hold me accountable for this. Or he doesn't acknowledge it. Hey, come on. Everybody talks like that. That's just the way that we talk, man. Okay, you've got got different responses. So the point is you've got all kinds of different scenarios And we need to tread very, very carefully when we see smoke. We don't want to rush to judgment, but we don't want to ever exercise judgment. And it would appear that a a persistent blind eye was turned in the situation of Jerry Falwell Jr. We can learn from this. We don't want to become sin hunters in our churches, but we don't want to pretend it doesn't exist either. So when do you, when don't you, here's, here's, here's the bottom line. We should go looking for a deeper problem, but very, very thoughtfully, prayerfully, and carefully. And by the way, and being careful not to consult with other people. Um, hey, Jimmy, did you, did you hear what your pastor did, man? I'm so concerned about this. Um, I'm just, I'm really worried about him. So can we talk about this? Uh, you know, this is what he did. And I'm just really, my yeah. heart's just so grieved. 
There's, okay. there's a fine line with uh, between uh, Yeah, there gossip. sure is. Yeah, yeah. And we want to make sure that we don't cross that. You and I, to varying degrees, we are a board of trustees. We all because we all must hold one another accountable. Be aware of people's sin. Is it persistent? What is the level of sin? How are they responding? Do you see growth in holiness? Are there other areas of life? We don't want to rush to judgment, but it is not a sin to pull a brother aside and say, hey, let's talk about this. I think it's always wise to start asking questions and to dig, not because we want to avoid a scandal, not because we don't want George Stephanopoulos talking about us, but because we're worried about that person's soul. That is what should be motivating us. Yep, we want to protect the church. Absolutely. But we also want to protect that person from him or herself. So let us not make errors when we see smoke. Let us proceed carefully, but proceed we must. This is Wretched Radio. Pepperoni pizza for Pete, which in an odd way is a lot like the difference between imputation and expiation. Are you familiar with the difference, Pete? I didn't order a pizza. But it actually in Latin means completely, to completely atone. It's a Latin word, expiationem. And yet an action noun because it comes from the past part of the family. 